Hello, welcome back to my channel, and back to Duel Masters Kaijudo Showdown. In this episode, we will be taking on the Nature Tournament. And I probably should have done that to begin with. Um, I had to go through a few different controllers I've been setting up earlier, because uh, for some reason my Switch Pro controller just was automatically doing that. I don't know why. So, anyways. So, let's uh, begin the tournament. I'm only going to show the first match and maybe the last match. Because it is a long set of tournaments. Of, it is a long set of pretty much the same battle, basically. You know? So. Hello and welcome to the Tree Hugger Tourney. Congratulations on qualifying for this prestigious event. You still have time to visit the card shop and tune up your deck before you before the event. When you're ready to start, just walk through the door behind me. Now, if you're calling the last episode, we don't have money to tune up our deck, so... And how appropriate that we've got uh, the nature... HUD. <laughs> The nature hood for uh, this episode. If you've been following the series, you know I'm not actually paying attention to what that hood is. I'm just kind of cycling through them for the videos, giving them each time to shine. You know. Anyways, hello out there. Welcome to a tree hugger journey. I'm Peter. Oh God! Don't make me give this guy a voice. And I'm Max. Today's event is hosted by Mimi, who you might call a nature-born duelist. Naturally. Is it true that Mimi's a, a tree hugger? Man, I wish I was a tree. Mm, the cringe. Especially coming from someone that looks that old. I mean, given the time this game was out, Mimi is canonically like 15. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure, you're about as uh, smart as a log. If Mimi heard you say that, she'd kick your... Hey now, well, the sky... <clears throat> hey now, well, that excitement level of uh, the crowd is high today. As Tom returns for his second regional tournament. Jeez. Getting, like, the same character... <laughs> The same uh, voice. Blech. Well, I can tell you, I'm stoked to see he's returned. I can't wait to see how he fares against today's competitors. She'd kick him in the blank as well as she should. <laughs> Uh, censorship. Anyways, so this is the beginning of the tournament. I'm not sure if I want to save here. I mean, this is the first duel, and I may want to tune up my deck. If you recall, though, I did go for a uh, rush deck, sort of a rush deck. We've got some boss monsters in this deck, too. But our deck is highly geared towards getting cards like that out first. And what do you know? We have a nice high costing stone sword to put right onto our deck. Everything is fire elemental, so I won't have to worry too much about what I put onto uh, my mana zone. As long as uh, I don't want to summon it, you know? Okay, um, I forget what Crimson Hammer is. Destroying my opponent's creatures, that has power 2,000 less, that'll be useful. But for now, my opponent doesn't have any creatures. Uh, I'm deciding between Brawler Zyler and Immortal Baron Board. They're kind of the same card. I should probably go with Immortal Baron Board. He's got more power to him. Deadly Fighter Braid Claw has to uh, fight every single turn he possibly can, so. Ah, uh, man, I'm drawing all my boss cards early. 
Oh, right. The game's like, what are you doing? Your opponent doesn't have any cards. As you can see, I'm very used to rush decks. He does finally have a creature out, and it is a high-costing one. I'm going to actually put um, Bull Razor here onto the bench. And... wait a minute. Back. What's going on? Oh, that has 2,000 or less. In that case, let's go back to the mana. Actually, yeah, let's skip the mana zone here and just summon out our creature here. Okay. Bray Claw has to attack, and then it's just good practice to have him attack at this point because there's nothing my punk can really do at this point. I've already overwhelmed them. Uh oh, maybe not. Okay, yeah, I've already overwhelmed my opponent. The game is literally over. That is how in my element I am with these rush decks. So that is the first round over. I'm sure it's going to be a best of three. Yep, it is best of three. But with that, I'll meet you guys over on the uh, final match. Or set of matches, I should say. Of this uh, duel. Or not duel, uh, tourney. I bet you whoever duels me just hates me whenever I do that. The only real way you can deal with that is with blockers. Okay. We are on to the final set here. It is best two of three. I do gotta mention that. Um, I'm going to um, put the uh, best of moments in as probably my end slate. I don't know. It can't very much so be my end slate if there's no reason to for it to be and I'm not about to... Uh, Whatever the fuck. There we go, now I got a reason to not mark this for... To mark this not for kids. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna move highlights that were from the cutout duels into uh, the uh, end slate there. As for this, um, I wanna... Uh -oh, did I forget to save? I hope I didn't. As for this, I'm going to uh, put this whole set in the video. The entire set. I don't care how many duels the set is. It's probably a best 2 of 3, but it could be a best 3 of 5. You never know. Anyways, we're summoning Great Claw to start things off. As uh, you may notice from my uh, highlights. Later on, Bray Claw is kind of my go-to card. Speaking of, we got another Bray Claw. Bray Claw does require that I attack straight away. Or not straight away, but requires that I attack every turn that I can. If he's untapped, he has to attack, pretty much. Um, Crimson Hammer. From my opponent's creatures that has power 2000 or less. Or. Onslaught Triceps. When you put this creature into the battle zone, put one card from my mana zone to my graveyard. Fuck that. I don't care if you do have 5000. Screw 
screw that. I've got control of the field right now. Unless my opponent puts out a blocker, it'll stay that way. So I'll just take out his uh, creature there and continue controlling the field. And what do you know, a blocker? We have Rotus the Traveler. Guess who I'm summoning? Screw your blocker, I have a Rothus! And I'm getting rid of a Breakclaw for that. Because Rothus is stronger than Breakclaw. Thus I'll have more defense as well, so... Oh, come on, another blocker! Um, I think all I can do is add this guy to my, uh... Yeah, all I can do is add this guy to my mana. I'm not playing him on Rothus at all. Even if Rothus could evolve on him. Or have him evolve. Have him played on him. Something like that. Even if he could evolve from uh, Rothus. Um, and he certainly can't evolve from uh, Breakclaw. Since Breakclaw is uh, Dragonwood, not human. So, straight into my mana zone. Breakclaw has to attack. Yeah, I figured he wasn't gonna let me, uh... Get one over on him with my Orthus. Two blockers! No, 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 back, 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 back. It's good I can do that in this game. Can't be able to do that in the actual Duel Masters set. Um, Breakclaw has to attack. And of course you're blocking with that guy. He blocks with Phantom Fish, so that's the end of that Breakclaw, and Rothus doesn't get any attacks this turn, because I'm not sacrificing him to that Jellfish he's got. Revolverfish? Jellfish? I'm not sure which one that is. All I know is he's got 5,000 attack power. Ah, there goes two of my shields. That's actually probably a good thing for me, though. Tornado Flame! This card... Destroys one of my creatures... Oh, destroy one of my opponent's creatures that has power 4,000 or less. So he could get rid of his blocker. Sort of. Okay. Let's put Brawler Zyler onto uh, the mana to summon. To uh, use Tornado Flame. I'm not sure if Tornado Flame uses a shield. I hope not. And we're going to get rid of his Phantom Fish. And that'll be the end of my turn. I can't use that card to get rid of his other blocker, unfortunately. Oh, please tell me that's not a blocker. Oh, it's a weak blocker. Oh, um, he got rid of my Rothus. Shoot. Oh, we're so close to being able to summon out Sky Tear. But not quite yet. Okay, um... Fatal Attacker Harvoth, let's put you onto uh, the bench. We have a Rothus! So, of course, I'm using that. Get rid of Zop here. Uh, of course. Um. Great Claw. And to end things off, Epicora. The only problem with Picor is he's gonna make it a little bit longer for me to get my Sky Terror out because I gotta get rid of some mana to hum in Picora. And that time may have just cost me.
Thing is, though, is if I can survive to the next turn... Yeah, right. If I could've survived to the next turn, I would've had that one. Even if he did block, you know? Obviously, we're going first. We do not have a card we can summon this turn, so... Ah, uh, starting out with blockers. Great. Let's put out Moral Baron He'll be able to attack next turn. So that blocker doesn't mean much to me. Or... Maybe we won't have to worry about losing him. Yeah, we won't have to worry about losing him. We can actually use Crimson Hammer. We can use Crimson Hammer and get rid of his blocker there. And my play here is going to cost me a mana. Or some mana, so it's probably going to slow me down a little. But, I'm summoning up Pecora. And, we can just straight up attack. Without having to worry about losing our Brawlers either. Alright. Um. I'm gonna put Stone Sore on Stone Sore on my uh, bench. Or in the mana zone. Yeah. And somebody out what was your name? Explosive Dojo. Explosive Dojo. Okay. Take the chance to attack. After all, it's a rush deck. Oof. Rough. Okay, well, let's summon out Fatal Fighter something. Fatal Fighter and Deadly Bird. Deadly uh, Bird Claw. Deadly Fighter Bird Claw. Yeah. Okay, I was like trying to remember his name on the spot. It wasn't coming to me. Sure, block all you want. Oh shit. That was the only other... Attack was me. Nope. Okay. He must have had a reason to want to get rid of that card. If he was smart, he would have... ...taken the only other card that hasn't gone yet. You know? And he's screwed. There's nothing he can do. I'm gonna get... I'm going to uh, put... Armored Cannon Balboa onto my bench, into the man zone, whatever you want to say. I know it doesn't mean much, but I've got a few guys I want to summon out. Just in case. And that is game. I believe this is round two, so yep, we got round three, and of course, my opponent chooses to go first. Oh, shit! I didn't realize we had Sky Tear. Sky Tear goes straight to the bench, because he's super useless in my hand right now, other than as my last. Uh. 
I don't want to summon Kakora, and I definitely don't want to summon Snip Striker, so let's go with more of a Bomb Board. And Blade Fighter. Deadly Fighter, Blade Claw has to attack. Nothing I can really do about that. Okay, yeah. Um, I think for this turn I'm actually going to go Snip Striker and Artisan Pecora. And let's not attack! We do have a blocker to deal with. Two blockers to deal with. Highest power right now is 4,000. Um, now I've got just the card to deal with it. At least I think so. Hold on, let me double check. 4,000, yep. That is the card to deal with it. So next turn we will be able to attack unless he summons out a, uh, a blocker who's 5,000 power. Oof, that is a strong card against my deck. I believe. Hold on, actually let me double check. I know Stained Glass is a good card. Because I had it in my deck previously. Whenever this creature attacks before a creature can block it, you may choose a fire creature or a nature creature in the battle zone, return it to its owner's hand. Yeah, that card is going to fuck me over. So we're going to want to do what we can to get rid of it as soon as possible. Um, let's focus on our firepower here. So, Ghost of Dude Joe is going to my mana zone. Break Claw and, uh,. Xyler is coming out onto the field. And I believe it was you that had Power Attacker? Well, you have at least one Armoid in the battle zone. This creature gets plus 2,000 power. Oh! Um... I may have counted on my uh, blessings a little too quickly. Do I have any armwoods on the field? I don't think I do. I don't. One other armwood, so I, technically I need more than more available attackers out on the field. That's great to know. We do have six creatures on the field right now. One of them being freaking Braid Claw, so we'll have to attack next turn no matter what. It looks like we're gonna have to overpower our opponent during that turn somehow. He's going to guaranteed attack with Stained Glass next turn. That's gonna put us down to five. So we'll be using. Two creatures. One of them will most definitely probably be Great Claw. Attacking. And we should probably attack uh, his stained glass. If not, we're going to be down a creature. Let's just be counting how many attacks we'll get. So we'll get two shields off of him. She's got four now. That'll also leave us open to attack, though, which means we'll be losing... Yeah, we'll be left with two creatures as well. Next turn. <laughs> now the question is, how is this going to end? Completely, you know? Oh, 
wait, I already predicted that was gonna happen. <laughs> what am I going over? Um, I got a boss monster to summon. Thank God. I am summoning out the boss monster this turn because we're definitely gonna need him. Um, I do have to give up mana for that apparently. Oh, a lot of mana. Okay, Braid Claw has to attack no matter what, so let's get Braid Claw out of the way. Um, actually, hold on. You're a Dragon Blade. Okay, yeah. Let's get Braid Claw out of the way. I just need to make sure I know what I want to do here. Oh, he let me get to a shield. Ah, uh, shit. Cora. Okay, we lost the Cora. We're actually gonna want to attack all his. Oh, well, we can't attack all his creatures. That's not good. Shields. This isn't good. Just let me take out his shields. What is going on here? Now he blocks. Ah oh, man, it's like he read my strategy there. It's just an AI, man. Dang. There's nothing I can do, he already won. I'll meet you guys back to uh, when I've actually uh, beaten this guy now, though, because... Shit, they're loud out there. Because, uh... There's no point in making you guys sit through three more duels. <laughs> well, that was simple! Pretty much had to control that uh, last duel the whole time. Anyways, we finally won the uh, tournament. And it only took us maybe a couple more tries than necessary, but... I had to duel this guy twice, technically. If we're counting all the... Um, duels within the set as a single duel. I had to duel this guy twice, I had to duel the guy in the semifinals twice. Everybody else was like a straight shot. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom! You won the Tree Hugger Tourney! Your presence will be... Oh, excuse me, I read that weird. Your parents will be so proud! The tournament host, Mimi, said she wanted to meet the winner, so you should go talk to her before you do. This is why you need to keep your text all in a single box. Before you do, here is your well-deserved prize. Also, please accept the super rare card from the Evil Crushinators of Doom expansion, Fighter Duel Fang. Ooh, sounds like a pretty cool card. So we got Fire Duel Fang that is, it costs 6 mana to summon, it's an 8,000 power uh, card, uh, double attacker, evolves on, sorry I want to see details, evolves on Beast Folk, when you put this creature into the battle zone, you put the top two cards of your deck into your mana zone, that's typical for uh, nature cards. Nature and uh, Fire, if you're building a rush deck, pair very well. Um, I think I mentioned something about that when I built this deck last episode. Um, nature um, is all about building your mana, whereas uh, Fire is typically about fast summoning. So if you really want a good rush deck, use Nature cards to ramp your mana and uh, 
fire cards to rush, pretty much. There are some nature cards you can rush with as well. Um, Sword of Butterfly is one that comes to mind. Um, Sniper and Mosquito. Yeah, those two are probably the best uh, rush cards in uh, the uh, nature civilization. But a lot of uh, nature cards are about ramping up your mana, so that's why they, they pair so well together. Speaking of, that first duel um, was a uh, fire nature deck, and it was not built according to that way of building a deck. That is literally the best way you can build a fire nature deck, is a rush deck built that way. Um, anyways, so yeah, it looks like a pretty good card. The boss monster and everything, and it builds your mana. Now onto the pack here. This is an Evo Crushing Eaters Doom pack, I do believe. Which, um, hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, my profile here for Coral Control, or, yeah, Coral Control. I'm not sure how to pronounce that card's name. Coralie Control, I heard. Recently I've heard it pronounced Coralie. I'm not sure if that's correct. Um, this uh, deck I'm still building, it, obviously. What I decided to do is um, any cards that I need. Well, the first cards that, that I come across in here that I need, I got the packs that it appears in uh, listed here to help, uh, obviously, with uh, which decks to buy. And yep. Evo Crushnares of Doom is indeed one of those packs for uh, one of the cards we need right now. Probably Coral, because we need four of them, and I think I've only got three. Rekago Dragon, that looks pretty dang awesome. Elect, Solidity Enforcer. How pouch shell, interesting. Looks uh, weak. I'm assuming those stars are supposed to mean that's uh, rare. If so, it's probably got some sort of effect. Let me check real quick, actually. When you put this creature into the battle zone, you may choose one of your opponent's evolution creatures in the battle zone and put the top card of that creature into your opponent's graveyard. So basically, it devolves my opponent's creature. Yeah, I guess I can see that being somewhat okay. Yeah, it's not the best. Armored Warrior Koalos. Sounds familiar. Boomerang Comet. This is a spell card. It's a shield trigger. I knew I recognized its name. Return a card from your mana zone to your hand after you cast a spell. Put it into your mana zone instead of your graveyard. That would be why I recognize its name. Yeah, it's a pretty good card to have. No matter what kind of deck you got. Heck, I'd even probably put that into my current deck. The Wood Room Baby Zops uh, thing. Wailing Shadow Bell. Baba Bethapu, I can never pronounce this thing's name, and I'm gonna have to multiple times over because this is a staple uh, darkness type card in the games at least anyways. It's a slayer creature with the power of 1000, meaning that this card is easily the best way to take out any creature any boss creature your opponent might throw out late game. That's why it's a great having just three mana as its cost. Um, Bone Piercer, also a pretty good card. Not so much as of not as much of a staple as uh Belt of Poo. Explosive Dude Joe, we've already got one of those. Roar of the Earth! Ah. Uh, Shield trigger, return a creature that costs six or more 
uh, from your mana zone to your hand. That would be a great card in a nature deck. The Merle. Emerald. Emeralds. How do we pronounce that? This is from, uh... Pep. This is from DM03, I believe. I just saw it in a video recently, ranking the top five uh, 03 cards, I believe. DM03 cards. DM03 or DM02, I'm not sure which. I'm pretty sure 03, though. When you put this creature into the battle zone, you may add a card from your hand to your shields face down. If you do, choose one of your shields and put it into your hand. If you can't use the shield trigger ability of that shield. The shield that you put into your hand, obviously. Uh, I can see potential in that card. First off, it's a creature, but second off, you can throw any card in your hand into the um, shield zone, so you can throw a uh, shield trigger straight into your uh, shield zone for your opponent to trip over. They will have to eventually trip over it if they're trying to win the game, after all. So it's a good card to have. And that's everything we got from this uh, pack. I'm gonna have to go through and make sure, uh, at the end of this video, make sure I go through and... Oh, hey, we got more. Real Ghastly Warrior. Alex, Solitary Enforcer. Um, that's a blocker, but... Dang, that's a expensive blocker. I'm a warrior. Claudius. Pingworm Fatil Larva. Mana Nexus, that is also a staple card. Um, details. It's a shield trigger, add a card from your mana zone to your shield face down. Do I even need to explain it? <laughs> Lena, Visor of Brilliance, Baby Zop, Bone Piercer, Sun Drop Armor, um, Sword Butterfly, funny I just recently mentioned that card. Alright. Oh. <laughs> and next. Dang, we got a ton of cars out of this. Darkagu Dragon. Psychic Shaper. Searing Wave. King Panitis. That is a boss card. A very good boss card. I think we've already used it in the deck later on. Yeah, I think we have. There's no reason to go over it. Flood Valve, I recognize that card's name, but I'm not going to overview it. You know, guys are brilliance. Raging Dash Horn. Um, I've heard this one's name before. It looks pretty powerful, though. Wailing Child, Belt of Belfoo. Sniper Mosquito, another one I just recently mentioned. Baby Zop. Alright, uh, that was a ton of cards, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm gonna have to go through and make sure that I get my decks all, um, well, not my decks all, but I'm gonna have to make sure I get that second deck, uh, built up. Anyways, so, uh, That is going to be the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. There are links in the description. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Sorry, I was too busy trying to make sure I save. I'm gonna double make sure I save, actually.
challenge yourself. If I say anything interesting, put it at the other end of the tourney here. Certainly not gonna sit here bored. I have my knives. And this is a lot of dueling. Like I said, Rush is just my element. I keep forgetting this guy. Uh, what's his name? Pecora. I keep forgetting Pecora requires that I destroy mana when I summon him. Like, I knew he, I knew it was one of the artisans. And they have a like similar art. I got them both out this turn. I just keep forgetting that I have to <laughs> discard mana for him. I'm gonna block me! Fuck you. Oh fuck. I'm gonna lose this duel, aren't I? Just cause I'm slower. Getting monsters out. Three braid claws, all at once. One more Braid Claw and I'd actually have all of my Braid Claws out on the field. I uh, just have Artisan Pecoras now. And I think... yeah. Throw one into the mana, get my mana upkeep. At this point, there's no way he can win. <laughs> okay, I guess shield triggers could save him, but... That mana crisis isn't gonna do him no favors. Thanks for the free card, dude. That's how OP a Braid Claw can be. I swear to God, every fire deck I make, I have at least three of them in my deck. Probably showed that whole entire duel.
go. Three to strip. Probably would have had a chance if I didn't use Tornado Flame. I don't know. No, technically, Baby Zop is a boss monster when you think about it. For this deck, anyway, since it's all fire cards. Cost three mana. Oh man, I was getting sky. I didn't have any human creatures I could evolve this card on. Okay, let's put Silent and Mana. Attack or two, aren't you? Uh, plus two thousand. Perfect. You're exactly the card I need. Wait, what? Hold on. Thousand, four thousand. How? Whatever. Again, overpowered by a ton of great claws. I bet you whoever duels me just hates me whenever I do that. The only real way you can deal with that is with blockers. Okay.